Assalamualaikum. Good day. So this week we will be looking at another topic, uh, but under the same uh, big topic or the same main topic that is language use in meetings. But this time around, we are going to look at the next item on the agenda, and that is further discussions on new items. Uh, this is the content we'll be looking at asking for clarification or if you like to repeat something or next one is uh, to rephrase a statement or to uh, the next one is recommending or suggesting or proposing an idea uh, and then we have expressing strong agreement yeah, if you agree with someone or maybe you agree but not to a point that you would um, you agree in general or in an in a neutral agreement yeah uh, also uh, what if you would like to oppose someone's idea all right um, or this agreement so we'll be looking at these things in this chapter so food for thought you know this one you can just read on your own we'll just move on okay now Agenda items that come after matters arising are usually the central focus of a particular meeting because normally this is this is basically the core part of a meeting where we discuss something that is current, where we would like to propose something, that we would like to table something in order to get uh, an agreement from the uh, meeting members. So these are important issues which must be discussed before decisions can be made, which means uh, this is the part that it involves um, it involves um, uh, decision making. Members are encouraged to express their opinions, make comments uh, and suggestions and voice out their ag uh, agreements or arguments on each of the items presented. So when asking for clarification or repetition, these are the few suggested uh, points or phrases or sentences that you can actually use. Uh, the first one is, I'm afraid I'm not quite clear about the procedures or your second point or your, or your third point or your first point, you know, depending on which point that is being discussed. Uh, or you can also say, I'm afraid I don't quite understand your point. Or you can also say, I'm sorry, I didn't get your last point. Could you say that again, please? Or you can even say, I am sorry, I don't quite follow your idea. What about if you would like to rephrase some statements? So these are some suggested uh, sentences. Uh, the first one is allow me to rephrase that. You know, it can also it can be it can be said when you are trying to say something, and you are certain that people don't really quite understand what you are trying to convey. So you may want to rephrase that, or it was said by someone else, and you are trying to help that person out by rephrasing his or her statement. Another way of saying it is, perhaps I should make it clearer by saying that, or sorry, I'm probably not making myself clear what I mean is. So these are a few things that you can, you can try. What about recommending or suggesting or proposing an idea? Because this will happen a lot um, uh, at this point. So these are the few suggested uh, phrases or sentences. <clears throat> I recommend company X, they have been the supplier for mega company for a number of years and they are reliable. Uh, or you can say that I think we should get a second opinion or I really think we should go for the second alternative. I propose that we bring this matter to the next meeting or my recommendation is to find other options. Okay. When you are expressing your agreement towards certain points, you can say a few things like this. Number one, exactly. Or number two, precisely. Or I agree entirely with you. Or I couldn't agree more. You are absolutely right. You have a very good point there. Yes, that's there's no question about it. That's right. Or that sounds like a very good idea. But sometimes we do not want to see that we are in favor of that person's uh, opinion. However, we agree with the suggested um, uh, ideas and, 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 and proposals, etc. So how should we can how, how should we say it? I agree. Yes, I feel the same way too. I think you're right. You're right there. You have a good point there. 
Now let us talk about disagreement. Now this is very crucial and it's very essential in a meeting. I mean, we cannot be always agreeing on certain issues or uh, matters. There will be times that we will be opposing to the ideas or uh, suggestions, etc. But how can we say or how can we project our disagreement but in a very uh, good way uh, in order not to, uh, to, to create some sort of tension in that so-called meeting? Often I feel that uh, there are two there are two downsides of expressing uh, not downside there are two critical um, uh, conditions um, or should I say there are two critical instances when it comes to disagreement yeah uh, so I'll just use the word instances yeah the first instance is um, often it happens in a meeting where you feel that if you were to disagree on someone's idea, it will look bad on you. It will look as if you are a person who cannot work together with uh, the rest of the team members. You are a person uh, who is seen as someone who loves to oppose things, etc. So this is this is something that is that is. Um, <coughs> This is something that is not good, actually. Yeah? Uh, not necessarily because one is opposing an idea, one is seen as a bad entity in that meeting. Not necessarily. You just have to have a check and balance in, in a meeting. Um, don't feel that way. If you feel that you would like to oppose an idea constructively because you have another better idea to, to replace what is suggested, then say it or project your disagreement, but in a manner that it does not hurt the feelings of the rest of the team members, especially the one who suggested that idea. Number two, I always feel that um, when, when people are expressing his or her disagreement in a meeting, um, that person is often um, sorry, uh, when, when a person, uh, sorry, uh, uh, um, or uh, there's also another possibility in a meeting where people do not want to express his or her disagreement because he is too afraid of the person who is giving the suggestion, especially when that person is someone who is superior than us. For example, the head of department, your boss, you know, your seniors. So you do not want to be seen as someone who is um, rude uh, in, in a way. So you would rather suppress your disagreement and simply agree to what is being tabled in the meeting. And that is also wrong. I guess what we can do and change the concept here is always treat your meeting professionally. Whoever is in the meeting we are all professionals and we are subjected to receive agreement and disagreement from the rest of the members so here are a few ways that you can actually express your disagreement uh, in a meeting but in a very polite and delicate manner uh, if let's say you have a very strong disagreement towards an idea this is how you can say i really don't agree with you or i'm sorry but i disagree completely with you or I totally disagree with you. It sounds harsh, but it is not. Or you can also express in a neutral uh, tone, such as I don't agree or I disagree. I can't say I share your view. I beg to differ. I feel I must disagree. I'm sorry, but I have to disagree with you. Quite frankly, I don't think we will survive adopting that approach. Next is expressing diplomatic disagreement. Now, diplomatic disagreement suits well in a situation where you have to disagree with someone who holds high position in that meeting. For example, the chairperson, your head of department. You don't want to be seen as someone who likes to oppose idea or someone who simply objects uh, uh, suggested uh, ideas or uh, uh, opinions in that meeting but uh, at the same time you feel that there is a need for you to point this out uh, your, your disagreement so that they can see there are some other options available to whatever the situation is so this is how some of the suggested phrases or sentences that you can actually apply like um, I see what you mean but don't you think all right well that's true that's true but I think we could do this 
or I, I suppose you're right, but let's let's look from another angle. Or maybe you can say something like, I can see your point, but I thought, you know, or you can just say, I'm afraid I don't share the same view. Don't, don't you think, or point taken, but, you know, or I see your point, but, or that is worth considering, you know, but in, in a different approach, maybe to these are the ways, you know, you can actually apply. Okay, that's this in class activity that I would like you guys to carry out where we may need three students or you can have more if you want to because it's a meeting and I would like you to act out the roles based on the situation given here. Enjoy!